Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Topaz Labs updated Sharpen AI to version 3.3.1. This update includes a significant change to the UI and it includes improved masking. In this video, I'm going to cover all of that. I'm going to be working on this image in this video. I like this image because I like the contrast between the two men. One is on one side of the pole. The other guy is on the other side of the pole. One guy is closer to the camera. One guy is further away from the camera. Also, I like the depth in the image. The guy on the right is in focus. The guy on the left is out of focus. But as far as focus is concerned, I really didn't nail focus. If I zoom in on the guy on the right where he should be in perfect focus, you could see it's a bit blurry. So I want to use Sharpen AI to sharpen him. But as I mentioned, I like the depth in the image. I like this limited depth of field. I like that the guy in the background is out of focus and I want to keep him out of focus. As a matter of fact, I want to keep everywhere else that is out of focus the same way. I just want to sharpen the man on the right. This is where the new masking capabilities of Sharpen AI will come into play. Now, as you can see, I'm in Lightroom. Sharpen AI will work as a standalone app and it does work on raw files, but a limitation of Lightroom is when you use plugins with it, you cannot send the raw file from Lightroom into a plugin. You have to send a TIFF, PSD, or JPEG. So I won't be able to send the raw file from Lightroom into uh, Sharpen AI, even though Sharpen AI can work on raw files. I just wanna make that clear. So I'm ready to send it over to Sharpen AI. I'm just gonna right click right on the image. I'm gonna go down to edit in and we'll go down to Sharpen AI. Now I mentioned you have to send it as a TIFF, PSD or JPEG. I'll use TIFF Pro Photo RGB with the rest of those settings there. Now you see it won't even let me send a copy or the original. I have to send a copy with Lightroom adjustments. So we'll click edit. Lightroom's gonna create that TIFF file with those settings. Once it does, it will automatically open it up into Sharpen AI. As soon as Sharpen AI opens, those of you familiar with the app will right away notice that the right hand side looks a bit different. Sharpen AI has three different Sharpen models. And in the past, those three different models were on the right hand side uh, with buttons. So you could just click on each button to switch between any of the three models. Below those model buttons were three more buttons for other settings that you could kind of fine tune the image. Now all of that is still there. They just got rid of the buttons. Now, instead of buttons, you have a list. So to get to it, you have to click on change. Click on change and you can see everything is still there. The three models, motion blur, out of focus, and too soft, they're all there. And those other settings I mentioned, normal, very noisy, and very blurry are all there as well. You just have to pick it from a list. Now for this video, now typically what I would do is I would, first of all, let it automatically find the model that it thinks would work best for the image. In this case, motion blur, very blurry, it thinks would be best for this image. What I would normally do if I wasn't doing this video is I would click on change and I would just sample all the other models just to see which one is best to me. It might not be the one that they think is best. But for this video, to save time, I'm just going to accept their motion blur, very blurry model. So that's one change, just the cosmetics of that right-hand panel. As far as the models are concerned, they work exactly the same. They're just now in a list instead of those big buttons. Now below that, we have the model parameters. Um, you could just click it on auto and it will automatically set these two sliders to what it thinks would work best for this image. Whenever you do a change like that, um, or you move the navigator window in the top right around, it has to update. And in the lower left-hand panel, you'll see there's a little progress bar. Right now it's updated. So you're going to have to wait for it to update. And that's what's gonna slow you down a little bit. Because on some computers, this will take a long time. So you try not to move the little navigator window if you don't have to, and you try not to move too many sliders around if you don't have to, because it will take a while to update. So I like that, let's just say for the sake of argument and sake of time, I like auto model, motion blur, very blurry, and auto model parameters. I could come in and tweak it if I wanted. 
But I had mentioned, remember, I don't want it to add any sharpening to anything other than the man on the right. If I click on the image, we'll get a before and after. So I'll click with the left mouse button. There's before and there's after. And if you look at the man on the right, there's before and there's after. You can see it really did a great job sharpening him. But it's sharpening everything or trying to at least. There's before, there's after. And I don't want it to try to sharpen back here or the tree back here or anything like that. That's where the masking will come in. Now in the past, masking was along the bottom. The masking has been moved over to the right hand side, makes it a little easier to see, and they've improved it. Now to use it, you could just roll it open by clicking that little triangle right there, or just click right here, and it will now auto find the subject. And it thinks the subject is the man on the right. And that's great, you could see the mask. So it did a great job, I'm really done. But it did it very quickly. Now I'll do a before after now and watch when I do it, the sharpening will just be on the man and it won't be anywhere else. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. So that's exactly what I want. Now you can come in and tweak things here. First of all, I have it on auto subject. It's going to try to automatically find what it thinks is the subject of the image. If you open up this drop down, you could see that um, auto landscape, auto portrait, and a custom is there as well. So if it, if you got like something in here, I don't know, like a vase, you know, there's no auto vase here. So you might have to use custom and then come in and manually uh, paint in the mask. That's possible. Also, when it does an auto setting like this, picking the subject, you could refine the mask. Click here. And this whole right panel changes and you'll get the mask at the top so you could get a look at it where it's white is where it's being sharpened where it's black it's not being sharpened you could add to the mask or subtract from the mask now first of all you may want to actually see the overlay see what exactly is being masked on the image to do that go down here open up this overlay and then turn this on you can see where the red overlay that's what's being sharpened now you could change the color. You could click here. You'll get a color picker. You could just change the color of the overlay and the opacity of the overlay. Now in this case, um, maybe I do want to modify it. You can see how it's over selecting a little bit, like the tree behind him and behind his head in front of his face. I could try to refine that a little more. I want to subtract from the mask. So I'll click on subtract. We could control the size of the brush there, the softness of the brush here, and the opacity of the brush. We could also make it edge aware. Edge aware means that it will try to not uh, go over any obvious lines. So in this case, I want to get rid of it from the background, but I don't want to get rid of it from him, which I just did a little bit right there. See, so you could come in. It's going to take a little while to try to, uh, you know, you have to maybe jump between add and subtract and see if you could um, refine it. In this case, actually, I think it was really okay. It wasn't, even though it was over selecting a little bit, I don't think it was that big of a deal. Now, if you just want to, you know, get out of here and like undo your changes, just click clear. If you're happy with what you just did, just click update. I'll just click update. And now we're right back onto the main screen. And I could come in, I could still tweak anything I need to tweak as far as removing the blur, suppressing noise. But I think actually this is pretty good and I think it did a pretty good job. So I'm going to click apply. Now it will actually uh, do that sharpening as the mask dictates just on the man on the right. And then it will return us to Lightroom again because I used it as a Lightroom plugin. And once it's back here, we'll just compare it. We'll take a look at the original raw file and compare it to this file. I'll open up the um, film strip at the bottom, hit the F6 key on my keyboard. So here's the sharpened file, and here is the file that isn't sharpened. At first glance, they look identical. But what we'll do is I want to zoom in on the man. So I'm going to hold the Command key on my Mac, Control key on a PC, and we'll just kind of zoom in to this area here. All right, so this is the before. This is the raw file. Now here's the TIFF file. You can see how it's considerably sharper. There's before. And there's after. There's before. And there's after. 
Now I'll zoom back out. Now what about like the background? Remember I didn't want to affect the guy in the background at all. So we'll zoom into that area. There's after. Here's, oh, now we got to. What I got to do is I got to go up to view and I need to lock the zoom position. There we go. So there's the uh, after and there's before. After, before. You can see identical, didn't change. But it did sharpen this guy over here. So there's after and there's before. So the new masking features, uh, although, you know, select subject and that, that was there before. Uh, that was in previous versions, but they've improved it in this version and they've made it a little easier to use because it's over there on the right hand side. So it's a little bigger. So I like that. The other thing they did was just cosmetic, uh, removing those buttons and putting all the different, uh, all those different models they put in a list. I don't really like that. I kind of like the buttons. But, you know, it's still workable and it still works just fine as far as, you know, I'm concerned. But I did like the buttons better. So that's it. That's what's new and exciting in Topaz Labs Sharpen AI version 3.3.1. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>